Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this awesome map animation. And I'm gonna show you how to do this using a method that's super effective and easy to do. Let's go. Now for this animation, you're going to need to source some of these country graphics. Now I save time and source these packs here from Envato Elements. The alternative is to use something like Photoshop to create these graphics and then create the textures which go over the top. But this would ultimately be very time consuming. So using Envato Elements makes a heap of sense here as it comes with unlimited downloads, which means you can experiment by downloading lots of different texture packs and not having to worry about the download limits. Now this is something I've personally now been using for over a year in all of my different projects and it just makes a whole lot more sense paying for one low monthly subscription and getting access to all of these versus having to pay for four or five different subscription services. Now, if you also wanna check out Envato Elements for yourself, you can use my affiliate link down in the description below, and that's gonna get you 50% off when you sign up to an annual subscription. So I've created a new composition here that's about five seconds in length. Then I can drag in my map layer. Now the pack comes with lots of different countries. The one that I'm using here is Australia and it's an EPS, which means that it's a vector. So if I click this little button here, basically rasterizes that and means that I can infinitely scale it without losing quality. So I'm just gonna drag in an image that I also source from Envato Elements. And this effect works best when you kind of use an image that kind of represents that country. So. Australia, here in Australia, it's quite dry and there's a lot of red sands and red rocks. So this, this kind of works really well for the overall look that I'm going for. So I'm just gonna scale this down to get into the right position. Then I can hit this little button down here and I wanna select that as my basically track mat. You also wanna make sure that this is set to be the alpha mat, and that's gonna make sure that that's selected as that layer. Now these little extra bits down here that we can't see, I'm also just going to apply a motion tool, and then I can just scale this up and mirror the edges, and that'll just hide that overall finished effect. Now what I did to my background is I just created a solid here. This can be whatever color you want, just drag that to the back. To this, what I did was I added a gradient ramp. Now what I did here was I, what I basically did was set the start of my ramp to be over here and the end of my ramp somewhere over here. And these are the exact colors that I'm using here. All I've done is basically just found a, or created a gradient based on the image. So this part's a little bit darker, so I went for a slightly darker side over this side and a slightly lighter part over here, just to kind of match whichever image you're using. On my Canada map, I did the same. I followed the blue tone over this side and then a green tone to match the trees. You just basically want to try and match it to your image for the best effect. Over the top of this, I then added basically this cloud layer. So I also source this from Envato Elements. It's basically just an image of some clouds. Put that over the top and just scale this down. Then I set the blending mode to be lightened. So that's gonna basically reveal that color coming through the background. And if I hit T, I can just scale this down to maybe somewhere around sort of like 28%, something like that looks quite good. Now what I did to my map layer, so my EPS file, is I came up here and I searched for basically a drop shadow. And what I did was I just dragged this out, gave a little bit of softness. That just kind of creates a bit more of that 3D effect. We're gonna adjust this as we go a little bit later because um, we're gonna create a bit of an animation on that. But for the time being, I'm just getting all my layers nicely stacked up. For the top part, what I'm going to do is create uh, basically like a trail that kind of follows this line. So I've just got my pen tool here, drawing out a rough sort of path of what I want the, you know, the little path line to do. I can add a slight stroke to this and I can come in here and just come down to my stroke layer, add some dashes 
and then just scale this up to get as many or as little as I like. Now stroke animations is a massive part of creating any sort of animation. And if you're liking this sort of video and you want to learn more about how to create stroke lines and even create different animations and also how you can learn animation to the point that you won't need to be watching different tutorials, then I have a course called Animation Master, which I'll link to down in the description below. And in that I walk you through how to use After Effects from scratch and also how to create lots of different animations, graphics, maps, and different graph effects. It's jam-packed with over 50 different animations to make. And again, if you wanna learn more about that, then there'll be a link down in the description below. Now, what I can also do with this is add a trims path to this. And if I set my start and my end both to zero, I can create a start keyframe down here at the end of my composition. I can basically drag this out and it creates a little line that looks like it's basically pushing out from the start, it creates this little path line here. The other thing that I also did was I just came up here, created some little ellipse paths. So I just kind of dragged down on this, created something that was kind of similar in color to my layer here, just created one that sort of popped up here, just duplicated this, moved it across, created another one and then just kind of created another one up here. So as they sort of come into these little dots are sort of like popping up. The other thing I also added here were some clouds. So I grabbed these little cloud layers, just basically hit S, scaled them down. And then I can just kind of position these over the different parts of my uh, locations. And this just kind of creates some nice little 3D depth. The other thing that I also did here in my original one was add these little images of birds. So you might like to use it as a point to kind of, you know, represent something of interest on the map. So, you know, for your different point of interest, you can create little icons. What I then did, the last thing I did was animate everything over the top. So what I did for my cloud layer is I just hit P, the background cloud layer, and went across my timeline, just created a slight movement to it, just creates like an interesting perspective. The other thing I did was also create a new camera. Now this can be just a two node uh, 35mm camera, which sits over the top. And then I can create or turn on all of these 3D layers. And what I did here was I created a bit of a movement using my point of interest and my position. I'm hitting C on the keyboard to basically zoom in here and then changing my point of interest to something like this, going across here to the end. Just kind of creates something more interesting. The other thing I also did here, if I just basically bring up that drop shadow property, what I can do is change the direction and the distance and the softness and then go across towards the end here and just kind of move this out, maybe soften this a little bit, move this the direction slightly. What that's going to do is basically imitate the back part of my, you know, the distance from the background. So it just kind of creates a more interesting sort of look. Again, you don't have to do that, but I think it just adds a little bit more interest your animation and that's really what a lot of good animation is all about it's just kind of taking and tweaking all of those little elements together to really make it stand out some things that i did in my original composition was also grab those two cloud layers and drag them out in 3d space what that does is basically creates a bit of 3d depth so it looks like the clouds are basically sitting over the top of your animation. You wanna do this with all the different layers to kind of create more depth between them. And this is really what's gonna give it that sort of 3D uh, effect. Again, this is another example that I did here uh, using Canada. And basically I just created this exact same thing showing you that you can use a different map animation to do this. So there you go guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips and tricks throughout the video. If you like this video, I can give it a thumbs up. You can also check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.